Welcome to Violin Adventures number 38. It's been about a year since we started these violin adventures. In that time, we were on our third violin making new violins and many repairs. We've completed four harps and a lots of adventure to go along with all that. Well, we're gonna start in with work on a new violin. Look at the piece of wood I found here. This is a one piece back and the flame in there is so interesting. Now it curls down a little bit there on the left. So I'm excited to make a violin out of this piece of wood. And then here is the top. We've got very close grain on this one. And now we need to pick out a mold. And I'm considering this one. This is a um, Paganini Guarneri, so it would be the same shape as Paganini's Guarneri. When I went over the video clips for this past week, I had so many, um, so I arranged them by topic. So all the repair this week on the old violin will be all together, and all the work on the new violin will be all together. Anyway, here we go. Okay, we're working on the new violin. The first thing we have to do is put in the box. And our whole violin is based on the box. Here we have some bow shipping tips. Okay, back to rehearing bows. I had four bows go out this week to different places in the United States um, for rehair. So if you need your bow rehaired, feel free to send it over here. It doesn't cost too much. Also, I have a tip for you. If your bow is worth less than $100, if you paid less than $100 for your bow, those are the worst kind of rehairs to have to do. They're not made to be rehaired. So even if you have a cheap ebony frog, inside they just drill straight down and they don't make the proper um, channel for the, for the little blocks that I have to put in to hold the hair. So I end up basically reworking the frog and also reworking the tip. They do the same thing in the tip. They drill a hole, they jab the hair in there and uh, use hot glue to hold it in. All this is bad for the bow. So anyway, I have to redo the, the bows. Um, you can get them rehaired but I'm considering charging like $20 more to do cheap bows because it just takes so long to get, get them working right. And sometimes you can't be sure that they're going to hold. So anyway, I'll still rehair them, but there might be an extra charge. As far as good bows, the, the better your bow is, the more expensive it is the easier it is to rehair. So I recommend 
Get yourself a good bow. Spend at least $1,000. And that may scare you or be shocking, but have you tried the bows that are over $1,000? Try the bows that are $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. You'll find that the tone is more beautiful, that you can play, you can express yourself better with a better bow. So if you don't have a good bow, get one. And if you need some help on that, I've got plenty of bows here. Now these are, these bows are rosined and we're going to ship them out in a tube. And some of you wonder how to ship your bow. Well, you really want the bow to not wiggle at all, not move around in the casing. So I always put a little bit of padding on the very bottom. Stick your bows in. And then I put padding up here on the top because you don't want your tip to be broken. I tell you, when, when you mail your bow, these things are thrown and tossed and jerked around. So you really want your bow secure so that when it's thrown, it doesn't hit your tip and break it. And yes, I have seen not only broken tips, but broken right in half. So it's best to either get a plastic tube or if you have one like this, you want to put it in a box. And again, you want the tube not to move around in the box either. So I'm going to pad the box. This is going clear across the country. So I want to make sure that it's going to be really secure and safe. <laughs> Now to the old violin repair. <laughs> Today we're going to start on an old violin repair and see if we can make this sound really good. Now this violin, uh, the wood is really nice on it. The grains are very, very tight across the top and the height of the top is, is fairly tall. As I look at it, I can tell it was one of the cheaper models. Not the lowest, but um, they did care to pick out good wood. They just made them a little faster than the more expensive models. Today, the very cheap models are made in China and they're just thrown into a machine. There's no care taken about choosing the wood. They just grab the wood and actually they grow the wood really fast so the grains are very far apart and then they just throw it into a machine and whip out these violins as fast as they can. Those are the very cheap models. So there's a big difference between the cheap models of today and the cheaper models of 100 or 200 years ago. In these cheaper old violins, they didn't carve out the inside of the violin. They carved it out roughly, but they kept it very, very thick. And so this is still very thick and I need to take it down so that it can vibrate properly.
is getting the uh, graduations a little bit better on this old violin. And I wanted to mention to you, we don't just take down any old violin. This is basically a generic violin. If this were a maker's violin, I wouldn't touch it. But because it's just a generic violin, which was made what we would call manufactured today, what was manufactured back then would be someone just hired to rough it out. And I found on this violin there were no graduations on the top. And then the back, usually the back is done correctly and I don't have to worry about it. But this back had the, the uh, graduations were... Now we need to take off this fingerboard. It is a piece of wood painted black instead of real ebony. Pre presently, this violin does not have any corner blocks. So I'm in the middle of fitting corner blocks. And that'll be like that. Okay, the four corners are in. Now this is the old violin, and before I close it up, I want to work on this upper block. Okay, right now we're waiting for the glue to heat up in order to make the repairs on this old violin. And when I started on, on an old violin, it's like the violin is in the emergency room. There's repairs that just have to be done and until those major repairs get done, you can finally re breathe a sigh of relief. The violin's going to be okay, and you can work on it. But at this point, uh, we finally got the old neck out. It's made in a different style, and so there really was no upper block up here. Um, so we have to put in an upper block. And this will give it strength and stability. We'll also, um, I'm still working on getting the old glued on block that was on here um, off so that we can put this neck at the right angle. It wasn't at the right angle. So all of these things just take a lot of time and a lot of patience because we want it to be perfectly right, then we can go on and ensure that it's going to be a good sounding violin. But right now we're just doing the basics. Okay, it's a beautiful morning and we're going to start by taking the clamps off of this repair. Right now, I want to take the new violin down and get it ready for varnishing. Varnishing the new violin. I've been scraping the violin with a really fine scraper. We don't use we don't use sandpaper on the violin, the top and the back, because we want 
the fibers to be free of any of the dust from the sandpaper. So we use scrapers. So this violin is all ready to go now. It's been scraped. A surprise. Okay, we woke up and what did we find outside but snow the end of April. This is just a little bit crazy. Okay, we're going to give this a deeper color. So, this will be fun to watch. There's an idea in my head for this violin case and I'm trying to work it out. So I've been talking to Tim, he's given me some ideas and ordered some books. That case is percolating, but it's not ready to be built yet. Okay, this is our new pile of supplies as we, as the violin case or display box is percolating, we're gathering supplies. Well, it's the end of a week. Everything is calm outside. Let's check inside. We have a lot of projects in progress. Here's our violin case that's in the works. This is the violin that's in the middle of being varnished and it'll be ready for a coat of oil varnish shortly. This is our old violin repair. This is what I call in a state of emergency. It's getting all the necessary repairs done. And here is our new violin. We have the blocks ready for the fitting of the ribs which are here. I still need to take these down 
and then we can put bend them on the hot iron and put them on. Over here are our harps. And in the machine room, we have another pillar almost ready to finish up. The Hebrew Minute. Kara elai ve enecha ve agida laka gadolot uftsarot lo yadatam. Call to me, this is God speaking. Call to me, and I will respond, or I will answer you, and I will make you to know, or show you, great and secret mysteries that you do not know. Well, a big thank you to all of you for watching this video. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and your thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And until next time, God bless you. Bye. A week or two ago, we had a big drywall repair in the shop here. So I needed to cover everything with sheets. And then of course, when it was over, I needed to uncover it. So it's like revealing a new shop all over again. Okay, this is the beginning of a special violin display box. Okay, this is a four volume set of ingenious mechanisms. Okay. And what I'm looking for is I want a special mechanism that will lift the violin. So I'm going to be studying these books to see if they give me a clue. So this, this is the beginning of the violin display box or case. We'll see what it turns into.